All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. So over the past three months, we had the opportunity to work with amazing companies. And tonight, you will be hearing about their products, about their companies, but most importantly, you will be hearing about their stories. And as you know, Demo Day is the end of the program, but it's not the end of their journey. So why don't we actually take a look at their journey with us? Being a part of SAP's larger ecosystem was actually a goal for us from the very beginning. What we viewed that as is a key part to our vision. I think it's really incredible that SAP is such a large company has taken a leadership role in making diversity a priority. Having access to SAP's uh, credibility as well as go-to-market infrastructure is incredibly valuable to a small company like ours. SAP I.O. gave us great access around the world for its sales leaders and thought leaders that gave us feedback on our product and helped us improve it over time. Having a program with SAP IO as well as being on the SAP App Center, it means that you get a lot of the insight details of learning how to navigate kind of a large corporation like this. Thanks to SAP.io and SAP in general, we've been able not only to see lots of synergy and opportunities, but also to achieve an integration with SAP for Anna. Selling to enterprise clients is a skill that takes time to develop and SAP has been a great partner to um, share that with us to get to these um, clients faster. So before we get started with the startup pitches, um, I want to ask you a favor. So please, can you pull out your phones I will wait until everyone actually has their phone. <laughs> Anka? All right. <laughs> All right. Um, now, can you actually raise your phones up in the air as much as you can? All right. Are you all on Verizon, by the way? <laughs> all right. Now that I know that you have, um, you know, you have your phones out, I have your attention, so I want to ask you for a favor, so please help us spread the word about these amazing entrepreneurs. Uh, you can tweet, post about your favorite startups tonight, and help us make sure that their amazing work can actually be spread around, and uh, you can help us as well. So I would like to have my first founder, Simone, Simone, co-founder and CEO of Ask Data. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. In the meantime, I just want to... My name is Simone Isoma. I introduce myself. I founded my first company when I was 13 years old. Technically, it was incorporated on behalf of my brother for, for the legal age, basically. I had also a customer in Switzerland at the time. So I started when, I, again, I was 13, what? To gain knowledge about business and enterprises. Until I worked in some of the largest companies all over the world, from Hewlett Packard, KPMG, Philip Morris International. And during my, I would say, journey, I discovered a little secret. What's the secret? The fact that only a fraction of business users use business intelligence on a daily basis. It's crazy. Why? Because companies are putting billions in data investments, and then only a fraction of users access data on a daily basis. So there is a return on investment problem, and this is incredible. It's great. So I basically I resigned from Philip Morris, and I decided in 2014 to create a company, a business about that. And I founded Ask Data. And what is Ask Data about? It's about you know, really solving this problem, this accessib data accessibility problem. How? Basically, you connect your data source, whatever your data are, into your enterprise to ask data, and you can do something that is magic. You can just search on all your data. So this guy is the CMO of Verizon. So basically, you can just, again, pull out the phone 
and search how many visitors I had on my website yesterday and get the answer right away. Considering, again, to the current state of the best business intelligence that we have in the world, it's a breakthrough in something visionary. And my story is that in the 2014th, when I realized that on the market there was nothing like this, I said, I have to build it. I have to accelerate this future, basically. Let's see if it's just a POC, a demo, or something you know, a bit more tangible. Let's move you know, with my story. Basically, I presented that to the Italian largest telco. And this telco said, OK, cool, let's see if it works. So basically, they deployed that into their call center to deal with the real customers. And they had some amazing output. So basically, every time that someone, now call a call center in team, basically, people, operators, agents, can just search quickly for the date of the customers. How much time does he spend on average on a call? How much does he consume in gigabytes? He, uh, you know, the subscription time, everything. In this case, you can create a great new customer experience. You know, the name of this sub uh, SAP court. And you, but at the same time, you can generate more revenue and you can increase the productivity of your employees. And basically, they were so much excited. Why I'm chosen this? Because they were so much excited, they invested into the company. So that was our first institutional investor. And after TIM, basically, I would say we got, I would say, the, the trust of different industry from, I would say, uh, banking, uh, again, tobacco, manufacturing, healthcare. All those companies, in a way or another, want to solve the data accessibility issues as, and partnered with Ask Data to solve that. And we are very happy. Why? Because we really think that with the ability to speak and to reach enterprise, with the support of SAP, we can deploy this revolutionary approach to a wider audience. And we can really change the life of billions of workers around the world that can now have a different experience with the data. An experience that is not being enslaved by the colleagues that are very good with the chart, in a way or another, but being free to interact with the data as we do on WhatsApp or messaging. And I'm very happy, why? Because Daniele also you know, mentioned that we have a native integration with the SAP HANA, basically. So now all the customers of SAP HANA basically can just connect to Ask Data and start searching for data. And we are working with Ariba and Analytics Cloud as well. That's a huge opportunity. Let me uh, just rephrase that. Why? Because um, it's 19 billion of dollar of market on investment on early base. And again, only 6%, this is Gartner, use analytics. We, together, we can move from the 5%, 6% to the 100% all together. Let's join this revolution. And if you are interested, let's chase for this guy. <laughs> 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 so thank you again for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Simone. Thank you. Next up on stage, Eli Flinkenstein. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I will butcher your last name. Good, good. <laughs> the CEO and co-founder of Constructor. Cool. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Ellie Finkelstein. I'm the CEO of Constructor.io. And what we do is we partner with enterprise e-commerce companies to help them with their search and product discovery. What that means for you as a user is when you go to an enterprise e-commerce company, regardless of how you're looking for something, whether you're using their search, you're browsing for something, you're looking at recommendations, we make sure those things are relevant, they're compelling, and they're personalized to you. Unlike every other search and product discovery platform, instead of just trying to match on words that you're searching for, we're actually optimizing for the KPIs that the business cares about. We're trying to maximize for revenue, for purchases, and for conversions. We use the Clickstream to do that the same way that Amazon and Google do. So the reason we got into this is we've been working on it forever. Both my, between my co-founder and I, we've got about 20 years of experience working on search and product discovery. We met at a company called Shutterstock. It's now public back when it was very, very small. He was a CTO there. They hired me on to do search and product discovery for it. I made it a lot of money, but also I kind of fell in love with the search as I was, as I was working on it. 
I did the exact same thing consulting at other e-commerce companies afterwards. And I realized two things doing that that just about every search engineer eventually realizes. So the first one of them is that you can always, always, always make more money out of search. We're not the only ones that realize that if you look at companies like Amazon, like Walmart, like Etsy, like Best Buy, they all wind up hiring very large search teams. They don't do that just for fun. They do that because the value of each one of those marginal, marginally added engineers, what they're bringing to the table, is much bigger than the cost of hiring on that engineer. The second thing that everybody realizes, that all search engineers eventually realize, is it kind of stinks being on one of those teams because you're rebuilding the wheel. Every single one of those engineers, they're not really solving unique problems from the ones that I was working on at Shutterstock. If you're working on this stuff at Walmart, if you're working on this stuff at Target, at Best Buy, in any one of these companies, you're really solving about 95% of the same problems. So it's this market that, on the one side, there's a whole lot of extra revenue to be earned. On the other side, it's massively inefficient because people are rebuilding the wheel over and over again. And as this is happening, the thing that's happening in the background is the legacy software stacks that they're working on, which were not built on pers for personalization, are aging while personalization is becoming more and more important. So this is what the state of search looks like today. Over here on the left, this is what most search online looks like. And probably everybody in this room has run into that in one way or another. You do something like look for baby spinach and you get baby food that has spinach in it. Has so everybody run into that at one point or another? Yeah. Right. So Mets where most companies are, it's because they're built off of these legacy stacks. You have a few companies that are here in the middle. They wind up hiring large machine learning teams and they get stuff that's mostly relevant. But over here on the right, this is really the holy grail. If you go to Google or Amazon or Airbnb, if everybody in this room went to one of those websites and we did the exact same search, we would get a different set of results. The reason we get a different set of results is it's personalizing to us based off of our click stream. Has anybody seen that experience on an e-commerce site not named Amazon? So that's why we exist. That's the future. That's what search is going to look like in the future. And it's just a question of who gets there first and how do you get there. So the flip, the kind of add-on to this is this is not just a problem for search. It's a problem for all product discovery. Ideally, all product discovery is tied together. The strategies are tied together. Whether you're browsing, whether you're searching, whether you're recommending things to people, we should learn from that exact same clickstream data. We should marry the strategies, and we should give people a good experience that learns from all of these in all of them. So we're kind of unique in terms of the companies that you might hear about. We're unique in that we're asking our customers for something really, really big. You know, this isn't just like some marketing play or something like that. What we're asking them to do is have us take over their entire search, have us take over their entire product discovery. They're not going to do that for any random startup. We've got to give them something really big for them to do that. Our customers, they see an average revenue increase of 11.6% using our full platform. That's why these companies, these massive corporations, agree to partner with us. Aside from that, we earn our customers far more than what they pay us, and we're proud of that, and we always want that to be true. We almost exclusively work with enterprises, and we've got a whole lot of experience getting them from zero to production in just a matter of weeks. Which brings us to SAP.io. We're big fans. I don't use the heart emoji lately. <laughs> We're available on the App Center. So if you'd like to use us, if you're an AE for SAP, that's a great way to use us. We use, uh, SAP uses us to extend the value of Commerce Cloud. We see that as a natural partnership. We're in conversations with a few SAP teams internally also. Love to power the search on App Center, if anybody knows anybody. You can help with that. <laughs> Um, we've got seven open and gate sales engagements out of SAP. We've got two open engagements with SAP teams, two POCs where they already started installing our software, and one very happy startup. That's us. <laughs> I'm Ellie Finkelstein. Uh, I'm the CEO of Constructor.io. The most impressive part of my presentation is usually my demo. They didn't let me show that here, so if you'd like to check it out, I'll be back there. Thank you all very much for hearing me out. All right, thanks, Ailey. Up next, Michelle Bacharach, CEO and co-founder of FindMine. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Michelle Backrack. I'm the CEO and co-founder of FindMind. Domi stole my line, my opening line. <laughs> um, customers today are pretty demanding, myself included. Part of the story is um, going to be about my journey as a consumer. And we expect to be guided across all the different touch points of our journey. But retailers are actually leaving billions of dollars on the table by not giving consumers like me this advice. So somewhat an embarrassing example. I am not a very fashionable person. Um, so when I'm shopping online, I expect the people who are trying to sell me this leather skirt here um, to be more fashionable than me. And guess what? They are because they're in the business of fashion. But somehow they're not providing me any kind of fashion advice or style expertise on this product page. This is a real retailer's screenshot, by the way. I'm not going to tell you who it is. But what they're suggesting here is actually based on personalized recommendations. And they're showing me another skirt, two shirts, and two rugs. Now, if I wore that outside with no shoes, even here in San Francisco, that would be a fashion fail. <laughs> so this retailer has not helped me to guide me with what to do with this skirt, how to use it. And when you tell a customer how to use the products that they're buying, because remember, the retailer has more expertise than us customers, customers will spend more money. 200% more is what we found. So why aren't retailers doing this? The reason that they're not doing this is because it's really hard. You have to guide your shopper consistently across all your channels, of which you have a lot. And you have to show shoppers how to use each and every product, of which you might have 10,000, 100,000. So it's pretty daunting. But that's why we created FindMine. So we actually use machine learning to try to predict and replicate the kind of content that a marketer or a merchandiser or a personal shopper would create using their unique expertise about their brand by hand. But because we use automation, they don't have to do it by hand. So we can actually give them scale to show a complete outfit for every fashion product they sell, the beauty looks that go with their cosmetics, or the furniture set that goes with the couch that they might be buying. This is a brand new category that FineLine has created. It's pretty contrarian. This is not personalization. Personalization is great. You'll hear a lot about it tonight. But the necessary counterpoint is, what does the brand think that you should wear? Or how do they think that you should style your couch? That's the missing component, and it's a $70 billion market that FindMine has dominated. And the reason that we're the leader in this nascent industry is that we're the only ones that can do high scale and high quality content. That's why brands that are major uh, household names trust FindMine. I'll take you through a couple examples of how these guys have applied FindMine's technology. Um, but keep in mind that FindMine is essentially a content engine and can be incorporated into any user experience that you can conceive of. So don't let these examples stifle your imagination. Here's Adidas's website. FindMine is powering a complete outfit for every product they sell on their product detail pages. If you are in the market for a baby crib like I am, you might be getting a lot of advertising for baby cribs. When you click through on those ads, FindMine can create a dynamic landing page that's not only going to show the right cribs for you, but also all the other stuff that you need to fill that nursery. And guess what? There's a lot of stuff that babies need. So instead of having to search individually for each one of these products, this retailer, who has more expertise in nursery design than I do, can give me a one-stop shop. In the stores, we can help store retailers, store associates, and personal shopping teams by giving them guidance on um, an application they have at the point of sale computer so that they can guide their customers verbally with this expertise. Or let's say you can't find a store associate, you can walk up to one of these kiosks or digital touch screens and you can guide yourself and see how to use each and every product that you might want to buy. And, find mine, uh, and finally, in the marketing channels, FindMine helps retailers guide consumers post-purchase or through win-back campaigns. These are all automatically curated, so no marketer has to sit there and put these together by hand. So doing this correctly, retailers are actually seeing game-changing lifts in revenue. We're talking about tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of dollars in incremental revenue for FindMine's customers that we've incurred to date. And we're doing that in a more profitable way. So they're saving time from their merchandising teams. We can actually improve inventory optimization and sell through of products that might not have been performing. And thanks to the uh, relationship we have with the SAP.io Foundry, which we're incredibly grateful for, we not only have three POCs in progress, one of which we signed the paperwork for yesterday for a major fashion brand here in San Francisco, um, but we also have the ability to pull from all the different places that SAP customers house data. 
So we're live in the App Center for Commerce Cloud, and we can pull from other data sources that SAP has to enhance the content that we create. So I'm gonna end with this quote from a customer of ours, I'll let you guys read it. Um, but if, like Adidas, and brands like them, you believe that a competitive differentiator is the way that the brand thinks about the world, then please come talk to us. I would love to show you a demo, or you can find us on the SAP App Center. Thanks so much. Thank you, Michelle. Next, we have Chris Martinez, CEO and co-founder of Idiomatic. Well, this is it. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of Idiomatic. Um, what we do is help companies that say they want to be customer-centric turn their customer feedback into actionable business intelligence. We do this for brands like Pinterest, Disney, and Bridgestone, for example. Um, you probably didn't show up to SAP Demo Day expecting to hear about fertility, but uh, the previous company that I started was called Glow. And we have over 10 million women using Glow to track their fertility and their health. And we used to get, hear from these women all the time. They would contact us on social media, they would write app reviews, they would call our customer support, they would email us. And yet we would make product decisions based on something that someone on our product team thought we should add feature that someone on our board thought we needed in our product, and why would we do that? Not because we were dumb, not because we didn't think our actual users using our actual product had interesting things to say, but because it was too hard to make sense of that data. And this is not a startup problem, this is an enterprise problem. All of you have, 90% of us in this room have probably contacted Comcast in the last year about something. And a bunch of us have contacted Comcast about the same things. That's the, that's the beauty of it. And why is Comcast not solving this problem? Do they not care about customer experience? Do they not want to be customer centric? It's because when they get the data, it comes in like this. It's a, it's a chat online, uh, endless stream of text. It's a survey response. It's a tweet, a public tweet on Twitter. I, you know, I'm arthritic hands. The remotes are too small. I can't use them. And all this data comes in as an endless stream of text. There's no good solution for them to actually be able to quantify this and pull out insights. The best they have available is feed this to a text analytics engine and get something that looks like this. And the problem is this is not actionable intelligence. Maybe it could be better. You could have sentiment in here so you could color code them green and red for good words and bad words. And you could watch it over time so you could see which words are getting bigger or smaller. Give you some sense of what's going on. But you can't make business decisions if I hand you a word cloud. So what we do at Idiomatic is we use machine learning to take all of this dark data and make this endless stream of text usable to a non-data scientist. We plug in primarily to customer, direct customer interactions, phone calls, emails, chats in customer service that clients are having with their customers. We plug into customer experience management platforms. So we plug into open-ended feedback, open-ended survey responses, anything like that. We plug into social media. We plug into third-party apps, uh, app reviews, you know, product reviews, anything like that. We take all this data. We tell you what your customers are saying, what they're talking about, how they're saying it. Tell you a quick story. So we service Pinterest, as I mentioned. Pinterest has 10, 12 different channels where they can hear from customers. We monitor all of them. And they had some ideas that this was a problem. But on Idiomatic, they started seeing that people were complaining that they were seeing content that was not relevant to them, specifically not relevant to their skin tone. So they were getting, they, they sort of, you know, if you ask someone on the product team at Pinterest, they would have some idea that this was a problem. But using Idiomatic, they were able to actually quantify this problem. So they were able to say, across all of these channels, how many people on social are saying this? How many people are calling customer support or writing into customer support? How many people are writing app reviews and saying, hey, this content is not relevant to me. This makeup is not relevant to me. I can't use it. It's not appropriate for my skin tone. They were able to take all this data, quantify it, convince their product team to actually build a feature and release it to the wild. So if you guys pull out your app, if you are a Pinterest user, and you go to it now, there's a skin tone filter. You can actually just choose which skin tone you are, and you will only see makeup, you will only see the other products that depend on your skin tone to use them, relevant to your skin tone, right? And before us, they would have just complained a lot, and product would have said, we got other fish to fry, we're not gonna do something like that. Um, 
We're really excited to be part of the SAP uh, Foundry cohort. We have an App Center listing, which is about live, so you'll be able to find us there very shortly. We are able to ingest data from any system, as I mentioned, and, and obviously SAP owns a lot of those systems for large enterprises. Specifically, we're excited about potential partnership with Qualtrics uh, for, for clients that use that for customer experience management. We have several global, uh, referenceable Global 500 customers that we already work with. As I mentioned, Bridgestone is a customer of uh, SAP and we work with them. And we're really interested in talking about being customer focused and customer centric. So if any of you guys are interested in that and actually listening to your customers, we'll be in the back of the room uh, to chat. Again, I'm Chris, I'm co-founder of Idiomatic. Thank you, Chris. Next on stage, Min Chen, co-founder and CEO of YC. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I am Min Chen, co-founder and chief everything officer at YC. Let me clarify that. So we all know that we are in the experience economy and that what matters is creating personalized and emotional connections with customers. Because the only way to turn a customer into a brand advocate is by enhancing the experience with the actual product. So let's say you are in the business of outdoor apparel. How would you create an experience around a pair of boots? You will have to engage with your customer where they are actually using your product. Beyond the retail store, but up in the mountains. And at the same time, you have to learn about their preferences to further personalize the experience. Now you might be thinking, how can I personalize the experience when they're so beyond my reach, they're up in the mountain where there is no mobile connection unless they use Verizon? <laughs> and that's why we are here. So at YC, we help companies bridge the gap between experience and operations by engaging users with mobile technology and artificial intelligence. We help companies capture new data and act on it in real time. So on the YC platform, clients use behavior design and AI to deploy mobile experiences to engage with customers, partners, and employees. Now let's go back to the example of the, the, the pair of boots. What if you can engage with your customers by showing them the most amazing hiking trails in the world and provide them with safety information and even give them a cup of warm cocoa that they can exchange for at a local coffee store with the points that they earn by engaging with your brand experience. You can be part of their journey. You can reward them for being healthy, for sharing the moments, and for buying more products anywhere in the store in the world. In the background, while helping clients collect diverse location-based data, even paper-based receipts in any format and language, and we process that in real time to deliver fresh insights for better, faster operations results. Now let me give you another example. Semex, one of our clients. They wanted to win a contract from the government to repair the roads in the city. Like any company in the industry, they have operation data. They had the formula to mix cement to create concrete. They knew the yield of every cubic meter, but they did not have experience data. None of them know, knew how many potholes they were, where they were located, and how many people were affected by that. So Semex deployed an experience on YC and hired an influencer to encourage citizens to report their most favorite potholes. Within a few months, Semex mapped the potholes in the city to deliver better results, a better proposal for the government, and also better execution. As you can see, Semex used the platform to engage the regular citizens to collect experience data and to drive better results in sales, productivity, and also creating emotional connections. Semex made the mayor look really good. They make citizens really happy. Imagine getting a pothole fixed because you reported it. What a great way to add experience around a product that is so hard and is so cold. So there are many ways to use YC. We have customers who have used it to engage employees to deliver field services, volunteers for disaster relief, and also customers for brand loyalty. 
YC is a flexible platform that requires no coding and can be deployed within one hour. It is flexible, it's scalable, it's secure, it is in real time, and it also works offline. The experience for Semex can be deployed with, within a few clicks. Through SAPIO, we have been exposed to international companies, potential clients. We're working with them on several POCs in the retail, uh, in, um, insurance, construction, industry, and we are also in the process of being part of the App Center and also working on the roadmap to integrate with these SAP products to accommodate our clients' needs. We're very grateful for being part of this global family at SAP IO. Our journey started in an unusual place like Panama, right in front of the Panama Canal. So on behalf of my team here in San Francisco and back home, thank you very much. Uh, please reach out to us if you want to see a demo. We promise you an amazing, wise, and easy experience. Thank you. Thank you, Min. All right. Next up on stage, Haggai Levy, co-founder and CEO of SetSail. Good evening, everyone. My name is Haggai. I'm the CEO and co-founder of SetSail. Uh, so uh, before starting SetSail, I led a team of analysts and data scientists at Google, building machine learning models to improve our sales productivity. And we ending up building around 200 dashboards that actually nobody used. Um, the notion that, that led us around that was something that we all feel today and we've been following for the past decade. Data is insights. And rational people, our sales reps, will follow the insights, which was completely wrong. I mean, there's one thing that reps are following, and that would be incentives. So at SetSell, we're trying to solve the traditional sales compensation uh, problem. And there are two reasons that sales compensation is not working today. One, we're rewarding lagging indicator, closing a deal. When the sales cycle is very long, sales reps will, uh, will go and do easier things. We'll try to uh, go and, and run and look for the low-hanging fruit. The other problem that we have is that our business objective is moving much, much faster than our sales incentives program. Typically, we set the sales incentive program once a year, and, and the minute that we launch it, it's already old. We have a new product that we need to launch. We have a different needs in our pipeline, and we need to now embed that back into our sales, uh, sales incentive program. Uh, at SetSell, what we're doing is, is quite simple. We have a new incentive system that can actually keep up with your business. What we do, we're using machine learning to understand buying signals from your customer data. For example, we understand when a customer is sending you an email, and uh, was it a positive or negative email? Who sent the email? Is that the decision maker or not? Based on that, we know if the deal moved forward, and we can incentivize the rep on making progress on deals every week. The way the system is working, it takes into account that 60% of your information is not in your CRM. So the first thing that we're doing, we're automatically capturing all that data through your inbox, uh, email, of course, um, and your calendar. We're also enriching that data with third-party data to understand who are you communicating with. Are you communicating with the right decision makers in these companies? Then we're building a custom machine learning model for your company. Every company has a different sales cycle, a different sales motion. And that machine learning model will try to understand what are the signals that are leading for a closed deal or a lost deal. Based on that model, we're building a point system for the rep. So in front of the rep will be a very simple to understand incentive system that he will get compensated on achieving these points every week. And of course, tracking that is relatively simple. You can change that every time that you have a new business initiative. Let's say middle of the quarter, you see that you don't have enough pipeline for next quarter. You can pull the lever and incentivize the reps on starting to work on that next quarter. We've seen with our customers different use cases that SetSell can actually add value. 
It can be a new product introduction, as I mentioned, penetrating target accounts, or even building pipeline in a different pace. Beginning of the quarter, you want to achieve linearity. End of the quarter, you want to get ready for the, quarter, uh, for the next quarter. We've also seen Setcell working on different frontline sales teams from business development. Uh, we all know, I, I just spoke with Paula today, that uh, business development reps uh, get their compensation by getting qualified leads from the AEs. So they're starting to develop a relationship with these AEs. Setcell can replace that. It's an objective system and can understand quickly how, uh, how business development reps should work. Um, lastly, we made a lot of traction. We just uh, started the company 18 months ago, but we're already in uh, major accounts helping major sales teams. A good example is with Dropbox. We're able to show really quickly in only 10 weeks, we're able to uh, provide Dropbox 34% increase in their net new uh, pipeline, which was a major problem for Dropbox for more than two years. That represents 10x ROI on their incentive budget. Lastly, the experience with SAP was amazing. We're working now with the famous Caledus Cloud, now SAP Compensation, to integrate directly uh, with the compensation management system. And of course, we're gonna expand to SAP CRM soon. Thanks for your time. Again, my name is Hagai. I would love to show you a demo if you have time and you want to see how the next generation of sales compensation is working. Thank you, Hagai. Next, and our last founder for tonight, Diane Kang, CEO and co founder of Brainify. Thanks, Domi. Hey everyone, my name is Diane. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Brainify. So a few years ago, I was working at Apple where I learned the importance about working with uh, user behavior and dynamic context. Then uh, I got the opportunity to lead Symantec's e-commerce engineering team where I came in contact with hundreds of different marketing automation software and really quickly learned that marketers are just not data scientists. Yet they crave that data science intelligence to not only streamline processes, but also achieve better results. And because of that, Brainify was born. We're a venture-backed startup that works with enterprises to enable predictive marketing at scale, to deliver the right content to the right person for all of those right moments, all while being extremely lightweight. In the last few years, enterprises have generated billions of data points. But when it comes to consumer experiences, 73% of that data goes totally unused. In order to capitalize on that data, you really need data science. But as we all know, it could be pretty expensive because data scientists are so few and in between. But did you know enterprises that can activate this in a smart way actually increase their marketing ROI by an astounding 3x? So introducing Brainify. We're the leading plug and play AI platform for predicting and acting on an individual's highly dynamic interests and preferences. In addition, we bake in the impact of localized weather, events, and holidays to anticipate changes in behavior. So with a quick show of hands, how many of you guys really enjoy a glass of wine or a beer once in a while? Maybe a cocktail? Yeah, I know, right? Personally, me too. Um, I'm more of a red wine person, so I tend to purchase red wines between Mondays and Thursdays. Once in a while, on a Friday, I'll go and buy a nice bottle of whiskey to share with my team for a job well done. And anytime there happens to be a heat wave across a weekend, I tend to go and buy beer. But if that heat wave actually overlaps with an art and wine festival, then I tend to go buy champagne. So with this predictive capability, we're able to work with customers around the world, from consumer packaged goods, to retailers, to financial services, and to telecom. What our customers use us for today. It's all about individualizing your engagements across all of your existing channels, whether it's app, text messaging, web, or email, to drive retention and repurchases and really focus on that best experience and getting that AI-driven personalization at scale. When we talk about personalizing for email, it's quite easy right, to go and manually curate for 1,000 people. But what happens when we have 5 million, 25 million? Then selecting the right content for those right moment then becomes a really big problem. When we look at personalization today, it's a really manual and labor-intensive process. You need a CRM team to segment, 
you need a product team to curate, you need analysts to then take it all and put it into some fancy Excel sheets, then you need an agency to design, proof, and code what you need. By the time you're done, an average of 24 days have passed and you got one engagement out for one segment, that's probably 80% of your users. With Brainify, we streamline that from weeks into seconds. Our AI monitors your data in real time and keeps track of all the behavior through any data silo, makes the predictions per person, and when it makes sense, it instantly sends it out through your existing marketing cloud. And the best part, we enable our customers to achieve real, tangible, and impactful results. So meet Bevmo. They're the largest alcohol retailer here in the US. With Brainify, we helped them achieve 51% in year-over-year -year online sales, which resulted to 21 million in new sales through email, text messaging, and web. Integration with us is a breeze. It's all done through one line of code. So you can think of our AI platform as both the team of data scientists that's enabling all these capabilities to make predictions in real time and help you discover new patterns that maybe the human eye can't see, but also kind of like your software developer because we programmatically send all the predictions through your existing marketing technologies. So all in all, Brainify, we're all about predictive personalization at scale, being as lightweight as possible using your tech, or our AI, helping your team be smarter and understand the dynamic aspects around user behavior and individual preferences, and activating these out-of-the-box data whenever you're ready, but most importantly, being much more powerful. You're gonna hear a ton around predict predictive analytics today, and they're all great at giving you insight, but someone still has to invest 24 days to then make that a reality. With our AI, not only do we make the predictions, we also act on it so that you can be proactive at scale, giving you that instant AI-driven experiences that's fast, direct, and measurable from day one. So our experience at SAPIO has been phenomenal. Pretty much, we came into this program with three goals. The first one, we wanted to create bonds and connections with all the leaders in the space. Secondly, we wanted to be on the App Center so that we can be exposed to more customers. And thirdly, we want to be able to meet all these different AEs that can then be able to co-market with us and be able to work on some new POCs. And I can gladly say, during this last few weeks and months, we've been able to achieve all of it. So big thanks to all the people that you know, worked, to, worked with us from day one. So Vanessa, and Suchi, and Domi, and Daniel, and David, and um, of course, Ram. So we, you know, uh, on behalf of Brainify, we really appreciate this program. So once again, my name's Diane. If you're interested in learning more about the program or getting a quick demo from myself, I will be in the back by our banner, so I'll be around. Thank you, sorry. All right, thank you, Diane. So before I hand it back to uh, my colleague, Shuchi, you have heard these amazing stories you now learn uh, a little bit more about their products. So I really want to make sure that you take the time to speak with the founders at the end of the event, uh, and you know potentially introduce them to mentors, customers, investors. But really, I had the opportunity to work with them every day. They are amazing entrepreneurs, and you can have the same opportunity. You can actually have the opportunity to engage with them. So make sure that you actually take that opportunity. And with that, I will hand it back to my colleague Shuchi for the last session of today. Thank you.